Hey guys, it's Jordan with National Speed, and today we're talking about that. And that is our Stage 3 package for the 2020 Toyota GR Supra, which takes these cars from around 330 wheel horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque to over 450 wheel horsepower and 530 pound-feet of torque, all on 93 octane. Oh, and also shaves off over a second on the quarter mile ET. In this video, we'll cover everything included in each stage and also cover why each component is selected. Then we'll gather baseline data with our test Supra. And then from there, we'll follow along in the shop as each stage is installed, tuned, and then tested back to back on the dock. But before we get into that, let's first go over our test mule A90 Supra here and go over the current modifications performed. The car is a Renaissance Red 2020 Toyota GR Super Premium with a two-port B58 engine, and the only modifications currently performed are the Launch Edition satin black wheels, H&R lowering springs, Perrin Performance 11mm front and 14mm rear spacers with extended bolts, and Z01 add-ons rock guards to keep the paint free of rock chips with a wider stance. All these modifications together are subtle, but still have a dramatic impact on the car's overall presence and handling performance. So with that all said, let's get into it. What you're looking at here are the parts that make up our Stage 3 package. And just like with most of our packages, each stage is designed to build on the previous. This means that you can pick off one at a time, knowing that you won't have to replace a bunch of parts with the next stage. Now, given the meat Toyota left on the bone with the factory calibration, our Stage 1 package is tune only via Ecutech. You'll see why Tune only deserves its own stage here shortly. This package also includes our in-house ECU bench unlock if your Supra is one of the few 2020s that require that service for tuning. Stage 2 adds in an intake system from MST Performance with options including a turbocharger inlet tube also from MST and a 3-inch charge pipe from AMS Performance. So with all those intakes on the market, why did we choose MST? Well, one thing we are absolutely obsessive about is selecting the most cost-effective parts for our packages. Design, fit, finish, construction quality, performance, manufacturer's warranty, price point, and availability all factor into this calculus. And while there are some incredible intake systems on the market from companies like AMS Performance, Eventuri, and others, it's no secret that these intakes are on the higher end of the price point spectrum. Ranging anywhere from $995 to $1395, these carbon fiber intakes definitely perform, but for the enthusiasts looking for a bit better horsepower to dollar ratio, there are better solutions. And from our testing, we found that the MST intake strikes a killer balance of similar performance to these higher price point intakes at nearly a quarter of the price, with the in-gen intake system coming in in a close second. We'll go over the results of the MST intake here shortly. And here we have the optional turbocharger inlet tube, also from MST. This inlet tube eliminates all factory plastic intake tubing, resonators, and restrictions to provide smooth airflow from air filter to compressor wheel. With our test mule currently equipped with a stock turbocharger, we don't expect to see any increase in output with this addition, but it will result in more turbocharger noise. And call me a ricer at heart, but I personally think that's worth the spend. Moving on to the AMS 3-inch charge pipe, let's start with a little context as to why this is included on all of our super packages as a strongly recommended option. This charge pipe is responsible for channeling air from the turbocharger to the intake manifold and the factory molded plastic charge pipe was designed to reliably manage factory boost pressure and the resulting charge air temperature. And given that each of our packages significantly increases the turbocharger's output, that means that we're also significantly increasing the pressure this plastic pipe will be exposed to, and as pressure increases, so does temperature. Over time, this combination of additional pressure and temperature degrades the plastic pipe's integrity at a more rapid rate, and will eventually lead to cracking. And once that occurs, the car will practically be undrivable until repaired. Given that, we strongly recommend proactively addressing this and upgrading to the AMS 3-inch charge pipe. This pipe replaces the factory plastic pipe with 3-inch inner diameter wrinkle black powder coated aluminum tube, complete with reinforced silicone couplers and T-bolt clamps. It's a true stock replacement piece that also includes provisions for water methanol injection if you decide to go that route. And this 3-inch inner diameter is perfect for both stock and upgraded turbochargers alike. And stage 3 includes all of this and also adds in a downpipe from Extreme Turbo Systems, also known as ETS. This downpipe channels exhaust gas from the turbocharger to the exhaust system and improves performance by increasing flow. Now, just like with intakes, there are a bunch of downpipes on the market, many from brands we use and love, such as Boost Logic, AMS, and others. Downpipes from these brands are all beautifully designed, fit perfectly, look great, feature high quality materials and construction, offer similar performance gains, have great companies standing behind them, and are typically readily available. But there are two reasons we chose the Extreme Turbo Systems unit. One, it incorporates an EPA-compliant GESI Ultra High Output Catalytic Converter Core, which is emissions-friendly, ensures no check engine light, and also supports up to 850 horsepower. And to us, that's the best of all worlds. While the downpipe from AMS also includes this exact same GESI core, 
The Extreme Turbo Systems downpipe comes in at approximately $300 less at the time this video was filmed, making it the close winner in this case. All right, with that all said, let's see how these parts actually perform. Up first, the guys strap her down for some pre-work dyno pulls to get our starting point for both horsepower and torque. Right, everything is coming in exactly where we'd expect. Now on that note, it's worth mentioning that Toyota hilariously underrated this car. Advertised 330 horsepower and 365 pound-feet of torque at the engine, with real-world dyno numbers coming in at 337 wheel horsepower and 397 pound-feet of torque. And we've seen this replicated countless times with other 100% stock vehicles. Needless to say, that was a nice surprise when we ran our first one on the dyno back in 2019. Anyway, now for stage one. With the baseline runs complete, we flash the ECU with our stage one calibration and then fine tune it from there for this specific vehicle. The guys have spent hundreds of hours refining this calibration. It's pretty much spot on right out of the box. All right, so remember when I said tune only deserves its own stage with this car? This is why. Coming in at 420.89 wheel horsepower and 501.44 pound-feet of torque. That's peak gains of 83.1 horsepower and 103.64 pound-feet of torque with maximum gains of 98.94 wheel horsepower and 105.15 pound-feet of torque. In terms of horsepower to dollar ratio, it truly doesn't get any better than that. Absolutely transformative driving experience, crazy part throttle torque anywhere in the power band, and gobs of extra power at wide open throttle. Now back to the shop for the stage two additions to be added. The MST intake system, an optional MST turbocharger inlet, and AMS charge pipe. and back to the dyno. Now, the guys flash our stage two calibration file and fine tune it from there. All right, so first of all, you can really hear that turbocharger sing now. That by itself makes the driving experience more fun, but let's look at the gains here. Now over stage one, peak numbers don't really budge, but we do pick up maximum gains of 13.24 wheel horsepower and 11.80 pound-feet of torque at 6,100 RPM. And over stock, that's maximum gains of 98.3 wheel horsepower and 105.17 pound-feet of torque. And back to the shop for the final time for the stage three addition to be installed, the Extreme Turbo Systems downpipe. This downpipe tapers from four inch diameter to around three and a quarter for connection to the stock exhaust system. Of course, if you want a bit more noise than the stock exhaust offers, we offer a variety of exhaust options, including Boost Logic, AMS, Akrapovich, HKS, AWE Tuning, and many others. And for those looking for maximum performance, the Extreme Turbo Systems Pro Series downpipe and exhaust system are also offered as an option. This converts the entire exhaust system from the turbocharger back to a true four inch inner diameter. While we don't see significant gains with this setup on our stage three package, the benefit really shows up at higher power levels. And man, that really brings it all together. Coming in at 472.96 wheel horsepower and 538.47 pound-feet of torque. Over stock, that's peak gains of 135.17 wheel horsepower and 140.67 pound-feet of torque, with maximum gains coming in at 146.64 wheel horsepower and 155.11 pound-feet of torque. That's an increase of 52.29 wheel horsepower 
and 41.09 pound-feet of torque over stage two, just by letting the turbocharger breathe out more easily. Now, if you're curious to see how this stage three package performs with various fuels or a flex fuel conversion, check out our channel because we've done two videos on each of those. So that's some pretty cool data on the dyno, but the real question is, how does that translate to real world performance? So to answer that question, we headed out to our local drag strip and also brought along our friend's stock 2020 Toyo GR Supra for comparison. The conditions were not ideal with the temperature coming in at 84 degrees and the DA coming in at about 2200 feet, but still plenty workable for our intents and purposes. Up first, our friend stock 2020. Launching from second gear and stalling up as much as we could on stock tires, we were able to cut a 195 60 foot. And we ran a best ET of 1267 at 107.22 miles an hour. With a better 60 foot, we could easily see a low 12 second pass, but our friend requested we didn't push his car too hard. Now for our stage three equipped 2020. While our car is fitted with 285-35 R19 Nitto NT555 R2 drag radials, we struggled to get the pressure much lower than 24 PSI. And given that this track isn't radial prepped, we would need significantly lower pressure to get the tires to hook up properly. And yep, we were using the tire pressure relearn trick, which worked fine at 24 PSI, but any lower in the car wasn't having it. This would instantly turn traction control back on and limit speed to 80 miles an hour. Not ideal. The real fix here is to remove the TPMS sensors altogether, but that wasn't an option in the moment. So needless to say, we were fighting some traction issues. <laughs> We did end up with a best run of 11.35 at 119.42 miles an hour in the heat of the afternoon with a less than great 165 60 foot. Terry picking the best from the day of 121.58 miles an hour from the morning and a best 60 foot of 160 and we'd be looking at near 11 second flat pass. In short, at a radial prep track with better conditions, this car easily has a high 10 in it on 93 octane which is pretty rad. Well guys, we hope that you enjoyed this in-depth comparison of our stock turbocharger stage packages for the 2020 Toyota GR Supra. And if you're looking for even more performance than this, we have packages all the way up to 800 wheel horsepower. Well guys, if you liked what you saw here, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions at all, we're happy to chat. Thanks for watching.